Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome everyone. Today we will discuss on stereoselective hydrogenation. We would like to specifically go about the molecule where we can get the stereocenter and then how the hydrogenation reaction can be utilized to generate different stereocenter. For example, all of us are aware of the fact that there exist a number of naturally occurring amino acids. Right, nearly 20 of them, right. Now, if you want to synthesize any unnatural amino acid or the, the other isomer of the amino acid which is not naturally occurring, what are the techniques that you can use? That is one of the way to solve these or to get this compound is to really do the hydrogenation reaction. So, stereoselective hydrogenation. That first we will discuss with the rhodium catalyst. Of course, the catalyst that we will be discussing today first is the rhodium L2 plus that is the one which is the dihydride catalyst, okay. Dihydride catalyst. This is the one we will be discussing and uh, you know of course, the topic would be how to synthesize, first we will discuss how to synthesize uh, non natural non natural amino acids non natural amino acids amino acids by hydrogenation asymmetric hydrogenation asymmetric hydrogenation okay there existed number of uh, number of important molecules okay. first of all uh, you know, let's let's try to look at the general formula of amino acid. This is the general formula, general substrate for non-natural amino acid, and um, of course another one uh, very popular is the L-dopa. Okay, L-dopa is the one where you have NH2 and CO2H. So this is going to be your L-dopa. This is the one which is used for treatment um, of Parkinson disease as you uh, as you are aware of Parkinson disease disease and this is the one which is an unnatural one unnatural amino acid. So, you can understand that it is very very important to synthesize this uh, you know this molecule because this is the only good drug let us say for example, for Parkinson disease there are a number of target molecule where you need an asymmetric center like this uh, where where um, I think uh, hydrogenation asymmetric hydrogenation comes to rescue and this is one of the more really uh, a broader reaction a reaction which is more reliable for asymmetric synthesis okay and we will we'll discuss today briefly about the asymmetric synthesis how for example, um, your uh, L-dopa can be synthesized by asymmetric synthesis. Let us try to look at that. The starting material of course, you need to have is the one with olefin. Let us say for L-dopa case corresponding olefin where the asymmetric center is there. If you can have the corresponding olefin, then you can expect to get the asymmetric hydrogenation reaction. Let us uh, try to draw this uh, overall this uh, substrate where this ORL protected maybe and then uh, then you get the double bond this is your the precursor and you need perhaps NaCOME because these are the one which which will be important both these groups will be important important for high enantio selectivity important for high enantiomeric excess right enantiomeric excess. So, this in this particular case the amide binds to rhodium and of course, uh, acid will bind to rhodium both of them are coordinating. Therefore, these are the one which will coordinate with the olefin or help guide the olefin uh, to the metal center. 
overall if you have a asymmetric catalyst, so there is no center center which will direct which way, whether R or S product will be forming at the center. So, therefore, you need a ligand which is which is chiral. So, chiral ligand is required and you will get the hydrogenation to give uh, let us say for example, you are the one going to synthesize the L dopa by this method. So, this is going to be up NHCONE and CO2 H right. Now, uh, for particularly for this case you get 94 percent EE with a phosphine ligand this L2 you can have like you know previously we have seen two different triphenyl phosphine was there as L2. You can have one substrate let us say for example, this um, eth ethylene di um, phosphine di uh, diphosphine ethylene diphosphine where one of the group is aryl group another is phenyl then again another group will be the aryl group another is phenyl. Now, this aryl group this aryl moiety the one over here can be the one for example, particularly for this 94 percent E in the literature it is going to be this one. So, why one, one thing as you can see in this example that the corresponding olefin is taken along with a bi coordinating you know axillary uh, which will coordinate or which will help direct the olefin to the metal center but there is no asymmetric induction in the substrate itself. So, you, if you start with an achiral substrate or then there is no chiral center in the substrate you need the stereo induction in the form of the ligand. Now, the ligand is going to be very important for the rhodium as you as you know for shock osmosis catalyst specifically it is a bis coordinating ligand. In this particular case we have this ethylene diphosphine ligand ok. Uh, the DPPE type of ligand diphenyl phosphine ethane ligand where the phosphine is substituted by two phenyl ring one is going to be your uh, aryl, aryl ring another is going to be the simple phenyl ring this is a chiral or pure uh, enantiomeric excess will be there completely chiral ligand. In this particular case we know that uh, this aryl group is uh, going to be uh, the one which is orthomethoxy one and this gives very good E up to 94 percent E. 94 percent means the ratio is basically 90, 90, uh, 94 is to 2 right. Um, so, so no sorry this is 94 percent E that that means it is uh, 97 is to 3. So, this product is 97 and the other other product is 3 overall you get the 90, 94 percent E. So, the the one up this uh, this group is up is 97 percent and the 3 percent you get where this is below. Now, this is a very good EE which is acceptable. Another thing which is important that this phosphines has the rotation inversion barrier nearly 30 k cal per mole. This phosphine has inversion barrier 30 k cal per mole. Uh, this inversion barrier is good enough uh, to get this pr uh, product in, in pure form but uh, inversion barrier right. Uh, but if you get the corresponding amine for example, nitrogen over there and uh, this will not get give you enantio pure uh, this uh, diamine because, because the inversion barrier is so little that you will not be able to get for the nitrogen if these two are nitrogen you will not be able to get uh, the compound in uh, enantio pure form ok. So, what we have learned right now is very simply if you have a diphosphine ligand ok. This diphosphine ligand uh, can have the chiral center ok at both the phosphine center and therefore, it can be acting as a bidentate clade for the rhodium for example, for shock osmon catalyst which is the origin of stereoselectivity in your hydrogenation reaction. Now, if you take for example, any olefin where you can potentially generate the stereo center, then you can you can expect by suitable having suitable R group or aryl group on the phosphine, you can you can get a decent enantiomeric excess. In this particular case, we have seen the dopamine L dopa synthesis uh, or precursor for L dopa synthesis, which is the corresponding olefin we start with, and we get very good EE such as 94 percent EE. Another substrate we can briefly discuss is uh, is of the sweetener aspartame uh, that is again the corresponding starting material is required 
and for the, uh, for example aspartam as you may know is the one where we have this um, you know CO2 Me over here and CO uh, further NH2 over there CO2 H. Now this is aspartam this is artificial uh, aspartam right this is artificial sweetener right. Now you can get for for synthesizing this you can have a precursor where you have this you know um, the coordinating unit is your this CO2 OME unit along with this CO ME unit these these both these unit will help you dock the metal center perfectly so that only one phase of this double bond is uh, available for hydrogenation reaction in this particular case you will end up getting the product with a corresponding hydrogenation product with greater than 90 percent EE right this is with again rhodium L2 uh, plus right this is with rhodium L2 plus okay. So, what we have seen so far in this case is uh, you know of course uh, you will have an HCOME along with it okay. What uh, we have seen over here the aspartam synthesis which is a sweetener okay we can we can we can have quite easily and um, aspartam corresponding starting material with the double bond can be hydrogenate uh, stereoselectively to give you the very good EE right. So, shock osmone catalyst as as we have seen so far is very good for asymmetric hydrogenation reaction uh, indeed industrially a number of hydrogenation reactions are done with the shock osmone catalyst of course you have to choose the right phosphine ligand is so to speak the diphosphine ligand to promote high level of enantioselectivity we have seen the example of aspartame and the l dopa synthesis now we will see if uh, how you you have a directed diastereoselective hydrogenation reaction okay next topic briefly we will discuss directed diastereoselective hydrogenation reaction Now, of course, the good catalyst for very uh, for this purpose is always going to be again going to be your straw osmone catalyst or even the Crabtree's catalyst, right? These can be used in quite good effect. The directed diastereoselective hydrogenation usually mean that you have a directing group into the substrate itself, which is chiral center. For example, over here, this is the one which will which will be useful. So you have the hydroxy above the plane in this case okay and you want to add hydrogen to it for example with iridium l2 plus which is again uh, scrap bridge catalyst or you can take uh, rhodium l2 plus which is again shock osmone catalyst overall in this case you are going to get the hydrogen addition from the same plane as uh, as you are having the hydroxy so hydrogen will be above the plane the, this is the hydrogen that is coming from here these two hydrogen and the methyl group will be below the plane and diastereic meric excess in this case because there are two centers this one and that one. So, these are going to be diastereomers the product are going to be diastereomers diastereomeric excess in this case is going to be 20 to 1 okay. Now, so this is a very again um, it is a, di a directed diastereoselective hydrogenation reaction and it is very important reaction because you have a cyclohexene moiety which is substituted by methyl and the you know with respect to that methyl you, you have at the beta position there is a hydroxyl group which is above the plane if you have that substrate you can have with either with uh, let us say shock osborne catalyst or will uh, or your um, you know or your crab bridge catalyst you can promote asymmetric hydrogenation on, on this on this substrate where the both the hydride adds syn to the 
uh, hydroxyl group which is on the top of the plane. In, in this case both the hydro hydride will be added from the top of the plane to give you the diastereomers, diastereomeric axis found to be quite efficient. If you all see particularly in this case we have 20 to 1 diastereomeric axis. Of course, the binding to the metal side if this is the rhodium or iridium center, if your hydroxy is over there it binds more of like this and then of course, over here beta migratory insertion occurs. Um, here hydrogen adds that is why hydrogen addition from up site indeed you know this is the site which is hindered by the hydroxyl group. If you want to draw in a in a little bit uh, more understandable fashion you can have something like you know hydroxyl up and uh, methyl will be let us say over here. So, uh, the way it would be attaching to the metal center will be like this and the hydride is over here and then hydride is over here your this bi coordinated ligand is over here. So, in, in this model as you can see hydride has only one way to add that is from the top phase. So, the same phase where the hydroxy is there the same phase the olefin uh, will be hydrogenated. So, both the hydride will be coming from the top phase. So, this is what is called directed hydrogenation. So, this hydroxy group is directing the hydrogenation reaction. So, the beta migratory insertion is taking place uh, at, at a, at a site where, uh, where uh, you have the hydroxyl group is directing from it. In this particular example, we, we have seen that a, a hydroxy group is directing the hydrogenation reaction and we are getting a particular product. Okay. If hydroxy is up then corresponding hydride which are adding is from the same plane right. Now, the question is if still let us say you, you have hydroxy up above the plane and you want to have hydride addition or the hydrogen addition from below the plane because you want to have the other diastereomer. How can you get that? Simply you know the answer to such question is since hydroxy is directing and the hydride is adding to the same plane from where the hydroxy group is. If it is above the plane, it is hydrides are adding from above the plane. If it is below the plane, hydrides are adding from the below the plane. So, to prevent that if you convert the hydroxy group into the corresponding alkoxy or some bulky OR group, then it is more of a steric hindrance from that side and therefore, of course, it will not be that much coordinating. Therefore, the directing ability will be somewhat lost. And, and acting as a more of a steric hindrance since let us say if the OR group is instead of hydroxyl we have a OR group and that is on the top now the hydride addition will be from the bottom side. Let us draw that one ok. So, to generate the other isomer what we will need to have is instead of the hydroxyl let us say we are having the hydroxyl from top ok and we are having the hydride from top as you have seen in the last class. Now, what you need to have is a protecting group OPG of course, still hydroxyl on the top O protecting group if you have that. Now, what you have is this is a bulky group ok. Uh, so, this is bulky therefore, not useful for useful for directed reaction directed reaction and let us say of course, what the protecting group could be you could have silyl protection, silyl tardutyl diphenyl protection and so on of course, and then you can have the hydrogen gas let us say for example, Wilkinson catalyst Wilkinson catalyst you can use. Now, instead of methyl below you have the methyl up because hydrogen addition is going on from the below side. So, hydrogen from the below just opposite to what you have seen in the last place ok. So, this is not directed anymore this is not non directed ok non directed hydrogenation you get. Of course, rhodium and iridium are good uh, good for directed one and uh, Wilkinson catalyst for, for the non directed one. So, what in these two examples uh, what we have seen 
that in the last example as you, as, you, as you remember in the last case we have the hydroxo, hydroxo which is directing and therefore methyl is coming down and hydride is coming up, hydride is coming up. So, hydroxo up the hydride up methyl down the one we have discussed right now with a protecting group methyl is up of course, this alkoxy is up uh, and then hydrogen is adding from downside. So, what in these two cases we have seen in the first place hydroxy is acting as a directing group ok and therefore, the from the same plane where the hydroxo is. So, the one we have drawn hydroxy is from the top plane. So, the hydride addition has happened from the same plane as we have also shown by the drawing that how the hydride is adding from the same plane and therefore, both the hydride will be above the plane and methyl is going to be the below the plane. But in the next place when hydroxo group is now protected with a protecting group such as the silyl protection with a with a bulky bulky uh, substituent on the silyl group, then what we have seen is it is no longer a directing group, it is more of a acting as a steric bulk. And therefore, uh, the if it is on the steric bulk is on the top, and then it, it the hydrogen addition will be from the downside or the below side, and therefore methyl is coming at the top side. And there, as you see, this is the way you can get both the diastereomer as as you may need. And uh, and for the one with the protecting group, your simple Wilkinson catalyst is going to be the best one and actually it is the cheapest one among the stock Osborne and the, uh, and the and the iridium catalyst that is the Crabtree catalyst. But of course, for the directing group you uh, directing group assisted hydrogenation one you have stock Osborne catalyst or the or the Crabtree catalyst as the best one ok. We will we will stop here today ok. I, I hope you will, you will keep reading more about this from various books and um, well Till then you keep studying, we will see you in the next time. Thank you. Swayam Prabha, Digital India, Educated India.